Hey, I'm Paul Rabelais. I'm an estate planning attorney helping individuals and couples all around the state of Louisiana get and keep their estate legal affairs in order. Before we move on, I wanna make sure you hit the subscribe button. That'll keep YouTube informing you of more of these educational videos. But I wanna talk today about a conversation I had recently with a couple. They each had children from prior marriages. We see that a lot you know, these days as people live longer and the divorce rate kinda of creeps up a little bit. But husband and wife each had children from their prior marriages. And the wife said something like, she said, Paul, if my husband dies before me, we got nothing in place. And I want to make sure his children don't come out of the woodwork to give me grief. What do we need to do? So uh, we talked a little bit more. And so I said, well, for starters, you got nothing in place. You got no estate legal plan whatsoever. Y'all bought a house together. Y'all been married for years. Y'all got bank accounts and other assets. Let's just, for fun, talk about what would happen if your husband died and nothing was in place. She goes and says, okay, well, what happened? I said, well, our Louisiana intestate law, intestate mean you died without a last will and testament. And we got laws that govern where his stuff goes um, if he dies without any legal planning in place. I said, uh, Mr. So-and-so, you know those things that you talked about that you own and you had them before you got married? Well, if you die with nothing in place, your wife's not gonna, not gonna get a bit of that. That's just gonna go straight to your kids. And so that was problem number one. And then, and then I said, all the community property that you have, you know, these joint savings accounts that you've acquired since you've been married, that uh, you've been putting all of your earnings into. Well, if you die, Mr. So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so, you're gonna keep your half of those things, and Mr. So-and-so, your half of the savings of the house, of the other assets. Mrs. So-and-so is gonna inherit the usufruct of your half, but there are a number of restrictions on her usufruct. Let's talk about that. So there are really, especially in a, in a situation where husband and wife have children from prior, prior marriages or relationships, there's, a, there's about three problems with that intestate usufruct that the surviving spouse would inherit from the deceased spouse. Problem number one, I said, Ms. So-and-so, if he dies and y'all had a house together and you wanna sell the house, you can't. You gotta go get his children to give you the permission to sell your house. That was one thing she didn't like. Second thing she didn't like was the fact that all of his separate property would just go straight to his kids. Neither you know she nor her kids would ever get any benefit from his separate property. And neither one of them really liked that because they wanted to provide for each other. And then the third thing she didn't like, she really didn't like this, was I said, Miss So-and-so, if Mr. So-and-so dies and y'all have some community property and under the intestate rules because he didn't have a will, you, Ms. So-and-so, inherit the usufruct of his half of that community property, his kids can force you to go to an insurance company and purchase a bond that you'll have to pay for every year so that their future inheritance is protected. So she did, really did, that's the kind of grief she just did not wanna have to tolerate from his children. Oh, there was one more issue. I said, and Ms. So-and-so, if Mr. So-and-so, your husband dies and y'all have, let's say just for kicks, y'all had a bank account with $100,000 in it, savings account. You'd get to keep your 50 and you'd inherit the usufruct of his 50, but even if you spend all of that money, your estate's gonna have a debt or you're gonna owe his kids the $50,000 that you have the usufruct of. Even if you got sick and spent it all, your kids may wind up with nothing because you've got to satisfy that usufructuary debt. So a lot of legal mumbo jumbo there, but suffice it to say that our laws that apply when you got nothing in place and you're in this maybe second marriage situation, boy, those laws really favor the children of the first spouse to die more so than they favor that surviving spouse. So virtually every couple, not every couple, but most couples that we deal with, they wanna change those rules, which they can, and they wanna provide for their spouse. Most couples wanna, well, I wanna make sure I take care of my spouse first, 
And then I want to make sure that, you know, my children, our children, you know, are protected after we both pass away. So a uh, lot of situations out there and a lot of couples procrastinating. They either don't want to talk about it or they don't understand the rules, but most of them feel like, um, you know, they'll tell me something like, you know, my, my spouse and I, we've each got our own kids and everything's okay right now. We all get along. Our kids are great. And then they'll tell me something like, Paul, but I wasn't born yesterday. I know enough to know that when somebody dies, you know, the kids or the heirs or whatever can come out of the woodwork and cause problems. Everybody kind of lawyers up. In fact, sometimes they remind me about an old Dear Abby column where she talked about when you really want to get to know somebody, share an inheritance with them. A lot of truth in that. So um, anyway, there are a number of relatively simple solutions for that couple that I'm dealing with, either through their wills or trusts so that they enable that surviving spouse to have that control that the couple would want the surviving spouse to have, you know, and not have to get permission from their daughter, uh, their stepdaughter and stepson to, to sell something, sell some shares of stock, sell a house, sell a piece of rental property, um, not have to post a bond, and that's just wasting money in order to you know, protect the children of the deceased spouse's inheritance. So uh, you, know, you hear about how this stuff can get complicated. It can, it does. You can do things to simplify it, but you got to work, you know, with the right lawyers and um, and get the right things in place and keep them in place so that you make things as easy as you can for yourself and your spouse and your kids and anybody else you'd want to make things easy for. So hope all of that helps, but really, really, really important um, that if you if if you're in a marriage and that all of the children that are involved are not, you know, the children of the couple collectively, then you're going to deal with some what can be some difficult legal issues. In fact, on my website, uh, you can click a button and then just go to my schedule and and schedule a free 15 minute call where at a prearranged time, I'll give you a call and and we'll start. Uh, just to talk through some of these issues, find out what your goals are, what you're hoping to accomplish, and then maybe figure out the simplest way to address it. Okay, hope that helps. Uh, I'm Paul Rabelais. Uh, hit that like button if you felt like this was some value to you. In fact, even post some comments below if you have some constructive you know, comments to share that others can benefit from you know, uh, your, uh, your knowledge and your, your experiences and your history. So have a great day.